It's time for EdTech Mondays, brought to you by Mastercard Foundation and CC Hub. Welcome to another episode of the EdTech Mondays Nigeria show, where we explore the dynamic world of education technology in Nigeria. My name is Chinyo Luapa, your host as always, and it's good to be here again. Today, we continue our journey into inclusivity in education by exploring how EdTech can cater to diverse learning styles. Joining us is a self-published author of 16 books, a special needs advocate, a screenwriter, and a producer of a documentary film, Echoes of Hope, Navigating Autism in Nigeria. She presently owns a five-year blog called An Inclusive Kind World, where she speaks on autism and the society's role in pushing for awareness and inclusion. She founded and currently runs a support group for persons who have special need siblings called Your Safe Space. Her dream is to make films or media content about disabilities and neurodiversity, curb homelessness in Nigeria, and provide affordable transportation for persons with disabilities in Africa. Join me to welcome on the show today, Oluwa Toyin Odunui. Hello, Toyin. Um, so it's interesting to see that even as you were young also, you felt there was something off yes, and something. you didn't know how to place it. You didn't know what it was. So at what point did your family figure out it was autism that was, you know, disturbing or distorting how he would normally have been learning? Okay, I think it was, um, well, normally, when we're at home, we used to work on his toes and then the whole thing about self-injury, but mostly when we knew was when he was in um, school with me, in primary school, and he wouldn't stay in his class. He wouldn't understand what they are saying. So... Ask him, like, okay, write this. He won't be able to write. Do this. He won't be able to do it. So that's when we knew that, okay, he had a problem with communicating and also with learning the way mm. that I could. So, yeah. So well. and it's interesting we are starting this conversation this way um, because most times when people hear about people who have, you know, varying learning styles and needs, they think there is a way they look or a way they present, right? Sometimes these things are not visible yeah. until the kids are trained into the traditional learning systems mm -hmm. and you now begin to see that there are difficulties in how they are assimilating, how they are communicating, yeah. and then it now be behoves on the teacher or yeah. on the parents, the support system to figure yeah. out how to help the child. Yeah. So now let's hear, how did technology now help in making learning and this episode this week is particularly just hearing the experience of family and friends who have had to support learners that have different learning styles and how technology has played the role because that's what the show is about yeah. so how did technology make things easier and better for your family at that time okay so we had a tab for him so we would put in like different games and also like um will i say educational games so to let him know different things like okay maybe types of fruits types of habits types of um what to do maybe to go to the restroom and all that so we had that we put it in his um in his tab the school that he went to after primary school after the primary school he went with us he they told us that he could learn visually so most mm. children with autism learn visually so when you see if surely when you go to like all these special schools you see all these um instructions in visual form so okay. that's a way that they can learn so people learn using audio but most people most of them learn are that. visual learners and yeah, this, this takes learners. us back to the first conversation we had where you know our guest was breaking down auditory learners visual mm -hmm. learners kinetic mm -hmm. learners so it's safe to say that most autistic kids will learn Visually. visually they yeah. need their sight so it now how easy was it getting and i'm asking this question because it now speaks to contextualization mm -hmm. how easy was it getting resources that fit nigeria because i'm thinking 2013 and he was learning online you know learning with a tab at 2013 how would you describe wait, was he seeing were you seeing things that he could relate to 
for an African child, for a Nigerian child living in Nigeria? No, not really. <laughs> no, we weren't saying that. But um, I think soon that would change. It was mostly um, things that um, Nigerians couldn't relate to. You know, um, there's this app that someone created. She stays um, abroad called Magnum. So it has to do with like um, showing, will I say, um, the instructions. So let's say you go to the mall now. So they'll tell you like, okay, you've reached the mall. This is what you need to do. That's for like people abroad. We need one in Nigeria. So I feel like we didn't really have one in Nigeria that could fit it. It's just mostly like, okay, it has to show different fruits, different seasons, how you should feel and all of that. So, yeah. so you'd say at that time, there was a big problem with you know yeah, there was a big content problem. for Africans, Africans, Nigerians. content for Nigerians, learning yeah. resources and tools that African and Nigerian mm -hmm. kids could relate to. So, yeah. with the experience you have now with this community, can you tell us about it? What has been? What has? How has technology made things better? Because you now have you know this your safe space. Yeah. You have an inclusive, kind world. You have so many things that are targeted at yeah. autistic children, and I believe helping them learn. Mm -hmm. is a big objective for you yes and technology is a tool of choice you know in making this happen so what has the experience been have things moved on and moving on now is are things better from the experience you had back then it's very interesting this is coming up because you have a community of people who have experience yeah. you know working living tutoring, supporting yeah. learners with diverse learning needs. Mm. Is, there an, is there a platform, is there a way that these people who have the experience, sometimes mm. even the technical expertise, can be introduced to people who are building these solutions so they know they can provide that you know, um, support, they can tell them how people who have this you know, learning disabilities can be supported. Because it's not, it's not okay that I, who am, you know, I have, I learned the traditional way, mm -hmm. I'm required to design a solution or a tool to help learners who are more visual learners or who are more auditory learners. Mm -hmm. What's the role of parents? What's the role of organizations like you who know what these people need, who are trained to work with them, who have seen them work, who have seen them learn, mm -hmm. in ensuring that the solutions that are being created right now are addressing their needs. Are you open to testing? Can they build and you know come to your communities and say, we will have the solution, let's test it out with you guys? I think it's very good. That's where collaboration comes in. So it's very important that we should do that, Shelly, with... Um for children because now adults they can still be able to learn but like children that are coming up people that have like um new diagnosis of autism now so i think this is where collaboration comes in and then also people who have the ability to create this technology they should be able to go for all these conferences mm -hmm. there are various conferences done in nigeria so they always address needs of like you know learning communicating so that's where it comes in so we have to meet Halfway. halfway yeah and so that's interesting and um the next bit would be that a lot of there are schools of thoughts that believe that autistic children and similar you know learning learners who have you know those type of similar um learning needs yeah. right introduction or introducing them to technology is not a great way because of addiction they feel oh no you're going to make it worse the child without the tab they can't do anything. Okay. What do you have to say about that? I think everybody has a um, what's the word a high chance of getting addicted to social media or to technology. So I think that's where you have to be sure that you have to create like a timetable or a system in place that okay, this is what is meant for. You have this tab for learning, and then you know. Um, children with autism, they have specific routines. Mm. So they know that, okay, this it's time for you to learn with your tab. Okay, by 2 o'clock, you put it away. So I feel it's not... Well, you can't say for everybody, though. Some people still get addicted, but I don't think so. So what's the advice, you know, you would give to parents? And this is not even speaking just to autism alone, mm -hmm. because there are a plethora of 
you know, conditions yeah, yeah, that different. would then mean that learners would have special ways they need to learn. Mm -hmm. We've heard that there are some learners who would prefer just writing mm -hmm. over even seeing or hearing. It just writes. It's easier for them to write down yeah. than look at the board or look at you, speak to them and things like that. So mm -hmm. how do you now think that technology is going to play? What advice would you give to parents? What advice would you give to educators who might see themselves as um, not knowing how to handle the situation and where technology can help them make things better? I think we should move with the times. Everybody is moving towards technology now and it has been proven that it's a great opportunity for people to learn, not just people with autism, people with other neurodevelopmental disorders and all of that. So I think we should just move with the times and maybe test out. Then again, not everybody learns the same way, but if you know, a therapist is saying that, okay, maybe you should try this. Then, you know, maybe you should listen to them. Therapist. All right. So my final question, I'm looking ahead. What are your aspirations for the future of EdTech in supporting learners with special needs? Okay. So I'll, I'll say mostly with um, people in the rural areas. We have the um, opportunity of learning because we are in an urban area. So I think that most ed tech companies should lead towards like people in the rural areas because they don't know most of, they don't know much about it and then it will really go a long way to making them, you know, more aware of um, not only the diagnosis but also more about like the disorder. So I think we should mostly get to the grassroots level and then to collaborate with the government if in terms of funds and in terms of reach. So yeah focus more on the rural people. The rural areas. And yeah. I, I agree with you because there's so much conversation that goes on for learners with special needs. And you would typically have these conversations, you know, go on in the urban areas yeah. as opposed or in comparison to the rural areas. So this means that children or individuals who might have you know, themselves diagnosed with mm. specific conditions are then excluded. So for the children, people do not know how to support them. Yeah. They do not understand that there are resources, that there are tools that can help them to learn. And it's very interesting because, you know, you have um, families, at least you would find at least one smartphone in almost every household every now. Yeah. So it means that if a child is has these special conditions, mm. it's possible that learning mm. can still continue. Yeah. So I, I really love that we were discussing this because yeah. even um, I partnered up with Cradle Lounge um, Initiative. So we did an autism awareness in Oberlin Day Ikoi. So we're just going around asking questions about autism to them. And we found out that most people don't even know. So I feel like, you know, not just with ed tech companies, but also like technologies to like make autism like the topic of autism, like, like say to break it down mm. to a level that they will understand. Because we kept on telling like, okay, have you ever seen somebody autism? They were like, mm. who is autism? What's autism? Now like, okay, some people that they don't communicate the way that we do. And after we explained those features, they were like, oh yes, they've seen. So I feel like most maybe ed tech companies can collaborate with other companies to be able to make an app or something to make people you understand. Make more. An app. <laughs> Just, I don't just know, I'm not, do I'm something. A, I'm not a technical <laughs> person, but yeah. Yes, you're not. I, I, I get it. It's. I, I'd say from the lens of education, there is a role that education and administrators need to play yeah. or have to play in terms of educating parents mm -hmm. what this thing means, what some mm -hmm. of these learning conditions can be, yeah. and how to look out for them, how to get diagnosed and how to begin to get support mm. then that's when you have these ethic organizations that can now build or have solutions yeah. that this course can feed into then you have the government as well who is saying they are willing to support yeah. the municipal who are building and even opening up because it's, it goes beyond as you said if you want to reach out to students who are in rural environments mm. because right. i tell people that our children will not compete with just themselves they'll compete with both the ones in the rural and in the urban areas. They compete with learners in the same states and learners out of Nigeria. Yeah. So we need to ensure that we are doing all that we can to get every child learning, bridge the gap where necessary, and ensure that learning is qualitative 
and quantitative at all times. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Lua <laughs> Thank you so it much. It was interesting and amazing. Hearing you give your own experience. Yes. You know, working with a sibling who is, who is autistic and, yeah. you know, helping him learn. And describing the role of technology in making this possible. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And to you, our listeners, what are your thoughts on the role of EdTech in supporting diverse learning needs? We'd love to hear your story. Do you have an experience just like Olua Twin that you want to share with us? You can call us on 0703-165-0809. You could also send us a voice message with your unique story on whatsapp to the same number 0703-165-0809 we would love to hear from you and do you want to hear what other people are doing leveraging technology to make learning easier and better for learners with special needs then where you would want to be are in our community so join the edtech mondays nigeria community on telegram or on whatsapp um, to hear from others and see how you can play a part in making education accessible for all. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you drop us a comment on social media. We'd love to hear from you. We are CC Hub Africa on social media. Listen to us on Spotify. We'd love to hear from you. Until I come your way same time next week, I remain your host, Chinyelu Apa. And it's bye for now. EdTech Monday is proudly brought to you by Mastercard Foundation and CC Hub.